Right, here's a video for A-level. It's about isotopes. Now, we'll just tell the definition first of all, because this is what you need to know. Two marks in the exam. Is an isotope is an atom with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. Or the same atomic number, but different mass number. So, to explain that, we need to start off with the most fundamental of nuclei, which is a proton. So, this is just a, a nucleus of a hydrogen atom. Now, you've got an electron whizzing around in a cloud outside. Okay, well, we're just going to discount that for now. And we're going to focus on just the nucleus, because that's where the isotopes really count. Now, um, hydrogen on its own is just one. So it's got a mass number of one and an atomic number of one. However, if we get a neutron and we attach that neutron to it, it becomes hydrogen two. Now, this is an isotope. Same protons, different amounts of neutrons. We can also make uh, hydrogen three. Now, these are the only atoms that really have a different name. Um, we call them uh, deuterium for hydrogen 2 and tritium for hydrogen 3. Now, um, if we just add an extra proton, then this no longer becomes an isotope, it becomes helium, because we have a different amount of protons. So, that's it. And this is just called a uh, helium nucleus. So, two protons, two neutrons. Now the thing is, with these isotopes, they are actually stable if, um, especially lower down the periodic table, they have equal amounts of protons and neutrons. So this is uh, pretty stable. Now uh, we can make lithium here, which is just three protons and two neutrons. That's an isotope of lithium, lithium-5. So um, we've got lithium-6, which is the most stable version. And um, I'd really like to take this point to say that Nuclei are not like this. These nucleons, the protons and neutrons, um, are constantly moving and flowing around. So they'll be swishing past each other. So here, this shouldn't make sense. You've got three protons close together. They've got positive charges. They should repel by the electromagnetic force. You've got three neutrons, which are actually neutral. So they have no charge, but they're attracted. So what is going on? Now, it tells us if there's one force pushing apart, there must be another force attracting, and there is. And at incredibly short ranges, we have this attractive force called the strong nuclear force. Now, you need to know the range of the strong nuclear force because it's in about um, 3 to 0.5 femtometers. And the reason it's that range, protons and neutrons are actually, you know, we can think of it as a model as them actually touching each other. It's not really like this because some of you may know you have quarks inside and there's something else going off there, but this is a model and it's good to understand it like this. So 0.5 femtometers, this force becomes strongly repulsive. But at three femtometers, it becomes strongly attractive, even more attractive than the electromagnetic force. Now, if you look at this graph here, this will show you the crossover point. So as the electromagnetic force, as the nucleons, as the protons get closer and closer and closer together, they're feeling more and more repulsion until this point here. So as you can see, where the strong nuclear force and the electromagnetism are equal, that is when an atom is just stable. When, just like on this here, the Velcro represents a strong force we have to get within that short distance before these feel any attraction. So, um, if it's beyond that, there's no attraction. If it's closer than that, there is attraction, but until we compress it and we can no longer compress it anymore. So that is why we have an attractive force called the strong nuclear force between 3 and 0.5 femtometers. Now, where does this come from? Well, it's one of the four fundamental forces of nature. Electromagnetism, gravity, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. Now, a weak nuclear force is to do with radioactive decay. The strong nuclear force has an exchange particle, just like the electromagnetism has photons, the strong nuclear force has gluons because it glues the nucleus together. And anything with quarks inside it is going to be subject to the strong nuclear force. Right, stable atoms. Stable atoms. Why do, why do we have stable atoms? Well, lower down the periodic table, it's because we have equal amounts of protons and neutrons. So I can quite happily here build this up. Um, but this is not a stable atom. I can have, here we go, I'm going to have six protons. 
So this would be an isotope of carbon. It would be very short-lived because it only has three neutrons there. So it needs six protons, six neutrons for it to be in its most stable. Now this is stable. This is carbon-12. It has six protons, six neutrons, so it's equal. Now, um, remember, these are all constantly flowing around each other, and that, that becomes a problem. Now, um, what happens is, now, if we think about this three femtometers, it's not between this nucleon and this nucleon, because that's further away than three femtometers. You feel minimal attraction from the strong nuclear force. Um, and these two protons here, uh, they're going to be pushed apart. Right, so, what happens here, then, if we add an extra neutron? Now... Overall, it just becomes carbon-13. Now, that's not a problem, we think, but this breaks down the kind of symmetry of the atoms. Now, the, the symmetry of the atoms is that, that it wants to be roughly spherical. Every single atom wants to be its lowest possible energy state. And what happens here is then we end up with something that upsets the party. We've got carbon-13. Now, this is unstable. It's radioactive. Even more radioactive is carbon-14. Now what happens with carbon-14, this is what we use for carbon dating. Now, uh, because it's unstable, it wants to become more stable. And it does that. How does it do that? Well, one of the neutrons changes into a proton. And it does this by decaying through the weak force. Now, the, the weak force, what happens is this neutron here changes into a proton and emits an electron, an anti-electron neutron. This then becomes nitrogen-14. It's got seven protons and seven neutrons. So that balance in between the extra strong nuclear force from the neutrons with no repulsion and the balancing out of the positive charges. So we get equal distances between the protons and it smooths everything out and we come back to this beautiful symmetry of seven and seven. Now this doesn't happen higher up. Atoms like uranium, for example, they are radioactive, but they're particularly stable, a half-life of four and a half billion years. Um, that's because there are extra neutrons in there, and they fill the gaps in between the protons and bring back a symmetry. Now, you may have seen in some of the latest research of pear-shaped nuclei. This has been predicted for some time now. Um, please go away and research it. You don't need to know anything about it at the moment. Ask me questions. It's fantastic. It's the latest research. Please come and ask me. But you don't need to know it for this. Just focus on lower down, equal numbers of protons and neutrons, stable, uneven numbers of protons and neutrons, usually unstable. And this is what we call an isotope. The same number of protons, different number of neutrons.